So here we are at about 20 days old. You can see they're really feathering out. We have a little guy that likes to get up on top of the feeder. There's Carl down there taking a rest. He's getting more feathers too. See Carl's feathers? They are significantly bigger than when we got them. They went through a heat wave. We had oh, temperatures in the mid and even some upper 90s and that was stressful. We ended up having to put a lot of shades on the windows. We had to put a fan in here to keep air moving. Dan had to build a screen door for the main door so we could leave that open and put a latch on it. So we've had some stressful times, haven't we guys? Oh, everybody's resting. Well, at least you're comfortable enough to rest while I'm in here. Growing feathers is rough business. Dan added another big stick. They are loving it. <laughs> They're active. They're running around being crazy. You can tell that they are about ready to get out of this thing. Uh, we're thinking as soon as the roost bars get put in, we're probably going to let them have the run of the coop. That'll give them more room. They are a larger breeds of birds. So that'll give them some more room. They can practice their little flying and whatever else they want to do. So Dan is building the roosts over here. Here he is now. But we're gonna have three five foot roost bars on each end of the coop. And he's building them pretty high because they like to be high and the roosts need to be higher than the nest boxes. Well, I mean, keep in mind that uh, this here at the end will be 18 inches off. Off of the wall. Off of the wall. Okay, so they don't poop on the wall. Okay. And then we've got uh, 15 inches from right here. Uh huh. And, and, and so it's actually might be just a little bit more, but. You know, from right here uh -huh. to there, and then we've got the 12 inches from the top of the two before mm -hmm. to the top of the other two before. And we're doing the 15 inches because we have the larger breed birds. Right. Now, here's one of my concerns is if I hinge this, oh. right there's the max that I can bring that up. Uh-huh. I'm almost thinking that um, we attach it uh -huh. with screws that I can unscrew and screw back. Screw or, unscrew. you know what we could do? Could you somehow make it where you could lift off the roost bars? Oh, well, yeah. Well, lift off. I'm, I'm well, gonna... maybe not lift off, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Easily detach it. Because yeah. we're only going to have to clean it. With the deep litter method, which should only have to do it a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. I think what I can do is actually make pegs and mm -hmm. holes on the roost bars so that it's pegged together. Oh, yeah. That way it's got strength this direction. Right. But yet yeah, we could take it off without mm -hmm. a whole lot of problem. Mm -hmm. But these will have to be attached. 
Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. As long as we can get to the bottom to shove the litter out of the clean out. Well, and I mean, do you see any reason why we couldn't I like this? I don't. Just maneuvering the broom or whatever around the wood is mm -hmm. the only thing I could see. But if you make the roost bars like you're talking about, that can be fairly easily detached. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, we'd only have to do the bottom one, probably. I just want to be able to walk around it to be able to open that little door over there mm -hmm. in the morning, shut it in the evening. I um, think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set I'm going to set up a slider on this side so that literally you wouldn't even really have to go back there. You could pull a string to let it come up. Oh, okay. And then... Wrap it around something yeah. to keep it open. Yeah. Then let it down at night. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think it's going great. Okay. All right. And I think that's plenty of good spacing for the roosts. And it's not too high. They can fly up there and sit.